first part of this, we'll be looking at the material from the book, and then we'll uh, go outside the book and look at applications. So SVD is a technique for handling matrices, or a set of equations in the broader sense, that don't necessarily have an inverse. This includes squares matrices, whose determinants are zeros, and all rectangular matrices. Common usages for it include things like least square solutions, rank and range computations, null space, pseudo inverse of a matrix, solving equilibrium equations, which we'll all talk about in the second part. But let's look at what SVD is uh, and how we compute it. So let's start with a two by two case because your intuition is probably a little better there. We can draw a lot more stuff. So let's think about having, of course, we know what orthogonal vectors and uh, orthogonal matrices are. So we take our orthonormal vectors pen them together and get an orthogonal matrix. And the idea of SVD is to, to think about a slightly different problem where we want to find matrices VU and sigma, or W, depends on where we'll, we'll go, we'll use different notations, such that A times V is equal to U times sigma, where sigma is a diagonal matrix. And we call this the singular value decomposition of A. Um, a is U sigma V transpose. And little sigma sub i's are called the singular values of A. And so let's see how we get this and, and what it really means. Now, it might be not intuitive why this is an interesting thing, but it'll become clear in a, sec a couple of minutes. So let's first start by looking at the symmetric positive F matrices, such as A transpose A, kind of thing we saw when we did PCA. That matrix is real and has positive eigenvalues, and its eigenvectors, by definition, are orthogonal. So if we were to have that SVD, if we just somehow somebody gave us those matrices, we could plug it in and say, well, what's A transpose A? Well, that's U sigma V transpose, quantity transposed, times U sigma V transpose. Now I use the fact that I can take the transpose. Remember, when I take the transpose inside, I uh, swap the order of the matrices when I transpose them. So then I get V sigma transpose, U transpose, U sigma V transpose. U transpose U, because U is orthogonal, goes away. I get U, V sigma transpose sigma V transpose. I can now take the uh, sigma transpose sigma and call that, uh, say, lambda squared, um, where lambda is, in fact, lambda 1, lambda 2, um, that's equal to sigma, which is equal to the singular value squared. And this turns out to be the eigen decomposition of A transpose A. Um, because of that, we call V the right singular vectors of A. Okay, in fact, if we go back to its definition here, you can sort of see V is the right side of A, so we call it the right singular vectors of A. The eigen decomposition of another positive semi-different matrix we've talked about when we were doing just looking at the covariance matrix, A transpose, we can do the same kind of thing, plug in A's uh, SVD type decomposition, Multiplied out, again, in the middle we get V transpose V kinds of things that are orthogonal, so they, they disappear. And we also see that uh, the eigenvalues for both sigma transpose sigma is equal to sigma sigma transpose. That is, the eigenvalues of A transpose A and A transpose are the same. In this case, we talk about the eigenvectors of this as the left singular vectors of A. And again, if we go back to the original idea that A is equal to U sigma V transpose, A and U, U is on the left side. So we call it the left singular vectors of A. So going back to the summary of that, uh, A is a product of three matrices, an orthonormal matrix, a diagonal matrix, and another orthonormal matrix. Um, so far this is two by two, so it's pretty easy to just keep track of all the sizes. The interesting property here is that the singular values are the square root of lambda, where lambda i are the eigenvalues of A transpose A and A transpose. And U and V are the eigenvectors of A transpose A and A A transpose. Uh, so they're eigenvectors, but of transform matrices. And since at any point in time, we can always go ahead and compute UI equals AVI, like we did when you're computing uh, your face space and normalize it, um, we can uh, continue to use those. So let's look at a numeric example, just to put it all into to absolute terms, then we'll look at some of the geometry, uh, still in 2D. So if we take our symmetric positive definite matrix, A in this case is, we can look at A, A transpose and A transpose A. We already know it's going to be the same because it was already symmetric. 
The eigenvalues of this matrix are 9 and 1. And in this case, the, the left and right singular vectors are both the identity matrix. So the SVD composition of A is just 1, 0, 0, 1, right? The identity matrix times what was actually A itself, um, or sorry, the, times the other identity matrix. Um, so for a positive definite matrix, uh, symmetric positive definite matrix, the SVD is identical to the eigen decomposition. Okay. For more complicated matrices, when A transpose A and A, A transpose are, uh, are not the same, uh, we'll get a slight difference. So let's look at uh, first geometrically, and we'll come back and look at the algebra for a second. So we already saw that for a, a symmetric positive definite matrix, we get something so that the eigenvectors and the eigen and the SVD vectors are the same. In fact, what we get out of that is that the action ellipse, the transformation of that is, is an ellipse, which we've already talked about, and the major and minor axes are just the values of the eigenvectors. So in this drawing, the, the sort of heavy point is the point one zero, and the thinner point is zero one. Right, so this is where they go. We transform a circle, it goes into here. Uh, we're going to look at the next, the next example before we go into the algebra, is give you some intuition. If we now have a matrix that's effectively a shear matrix, it's 1, 2, 0, 1. So this matrix is just going to shear the circle. Um, the point uh, 0, 1, the thin, uh, the thin point, is going to be sheared and moved way to the right, whereas the thick point, 1, 0, is just going to stick around where it was before because it's not going to be affected by this transformation. So in this case, we're going to get an ellipse, but notice that the transformation of the uh, E1, E2 vectors don't become the major and minor uh, axes on those ellipses. So that tells us that we're not going to get the eigenvalues and eigenvectors directly, but we are, we're going to get something else. So let's take that shear, and now let's look at A transpose A and A transpose, and you'll see these matrices are no longer the same. Um, the eigenvalues are 5.28 or 5.82 and 0.06. 0.17 for the A transpose A, um, uh, which gives us singular values of 2.4 and 0.41. Now, even though these matrices are not the same, you'll, you'll notice that they're actually related because there's a diagonal flip around the other axes, not the primary axis. Um, and so they end up having the same eigenvalues for both of these. In all cases, A transpose A and A transpose will have the same eigenvalues. But they'll have different eigenvectors. So the eigenvector of A transpose A um, the orthonormal column of vectors associated with uh, this matrix turn out to be these. We're not going to go through the calculation. Computers can do that better than I can. Um, and the eigenvectors of AA transpose are a different set. In this case, again, you'll notice there's a strong relationship between them. Uh, when we get to more general case, that won't have to be the case. And so our SVD of A becomes uh, U our eigenvalues, uh, sorry, singular values down the diagonal, and V transpose. Okay, this was V. Here we want V transpose, but in this case, all that really should do is move the sign around. So uh, to break down this in a sort of geometrical interpretation, we can actually look at what goes on during this process. SVD has a, has a nice, clean interpretation in terms of geometry. Uh, the V transpose, the last part, if we move it to the other side, um, is a rotation. Then we, so we take our original shape and then we rotate it. Okay. Then we're going to stretch it in the E1, E2 directions after stretching. So it's a different stretch. And then we're going to rotate it to some other or interpretation. Uh, remember, U and V are orthogonal transformations, and an orthogonal transformation can be looked at as a type of rotation. So we have rotation, scaling, and rotation as we go through SVD. Now, as we go to the more general case in higher dimensions, more importantly, we want to move to things that aren't necessarily square. And this is where SVD becomes far more powerful than what we've seen. If I have some matrix A, uh, and I'm going to end up with U sigma V transpose, but if we're going, to we're going to multiply these out, if A is not square, then these are not all square. But since U and V have to be orth orthogonal matrices, U and V are actually square matrices. Sigma will be the unsquare matrix. But U and V won't be the same size. So if, if our matrix is taller than it is wide, then 
uh, m will be greater than n, uh, and u will always be an m by m matrix. Whatever the first dimension of A is, u is n, that m by n, m. Sigma, our singular value uh, diagonal matrix, will be m by n, and V transpose will be n by n. So when it's tall and thin, u is, is a big square, V is a small square, and sigma is a tall and thin rectangle. When it's square, they're all square. When the matrix is short and wide, then u will be uh, the square but the size of the short, sigma will be short and wide, and v will be the big square. Okay. Um, both the singular values have the same non-zero eigenvalues, and the rank of this will be less than or equal to the minimum of m or n, which we've already seen. Remember, rank is going to be the number of linearly dependent rows or columns, uh, whichever, in, they're going to be linearly independent. This will be in the, in the middle. Um, we'll define how many we have. So when we go to that general case, um, we can always think of it as we want to find u and v such that a times vi equals sigma i ui. That's uh, part of where we started the equation. It gives us a big matrix equation. Again, v are our right singular vectors, u are our left. Um, and this is a generalization of the eigenvalue problem, but now we can do this for non-square matrices because v only gets applied to the right side and u only gets applied to the left side. So when matrix A is not square, we can have both of these work together. Um, so the rank of A will actually play a role when we do the SVD. Uh, the sigma, our singular values, has non-zero singular values for the first R entries and all the other entries will be zero. So now we have another way of saying what is rank. We can do an SVD decomposition of the matrix and ask how many singular values are non-zero and that'll tell us the rank. The first uh, R columns of U form an orthonormal basis for A. So the first R columns of U form an orthonormal basis uh, for the column space of A. The last M minus R columns of U form an orthonormal basis for the null space of A transpose. And similarly, the first R columns of V form an orthonormal basis for the row space. So an orthonormal, if I count down the rows, and the last n minus r columns form an orthonormal basis for A, of the null space of A. Okay, so uh, let's look at a non-square matrix, but it's still of rank two, so we have a two by three. Uh, if we do A transpose A, we're gonna get one, five, uh, zero, zero, um, across our matrix. Um, that's going to have uh, eigenvalues 5 and 1. Okay. Our V matrix, because that comes from A transpose A, will just be 0, 1, 1, 0. Um, and that's our eigenvalues for that matrix. A, A transpose, and now we start to see why things become different. A, A transpose is 3 by 3. A transpose A was 2 by 2. Um, we're going to get the first two eigenvalues to be exactly the same, and then the remainder will be 0. So in fact, when a matrix is not square, it's going to have a bunch of zeros down the singular values. In fact, we don't even end up representing them because they're all just from the zero eigenvalues of the, the appropriate piece. Um, and so we get our uh, sigma matrix, our singular value matrix, is diagonals of 2.23 and 1 because, again, they're the square root of the eigenvalues. So then our overall transformation is sigma uh, u sigma v transpose, is our matrix for A transpose A's eigen, uh, which is U, the, the eigenvectors of uh, A transpose A, our sigma matrix, and the eigenvectors of V. Um, and since M is greater than N, U3, this column, the last column of U, is in the null space of A transpose, okay? And you can actually verify, if I take A transpose times U3, you'll get zero. So if I go back and I take A transpose, and I multiply it by this, we'll end up getting zero. So now, I mentioned you can always interpret these in terms of rotations, whatever. Now it gets a little bit more complicated because we have changing of dimensions. So if we look at our, our matrix, um, the first thing we do is we started with our matrix, and here, here we have our little special point. And now the first thing we do is the ortho or, uh, orthogonal matrix. In this case, it's not actually, it's, it's a more general than a rotation, it's a reflection. Um, and so it reflects around and flows over here. But notice this is still in 2D, okay? And that's because V is being applied in 2D space. So when I 
apply it. I'm staying in the 2D plane where the original data was. And then when I stretch it by applying the singular value sigma, it becomes an ellipse, and, uh, but stays in the plane. Sorry, it becomes ellipse, stays in the plane, and then the final matrix U rotates it back out of the plane. Okay, so in general, when we're applying SVD, there's a rotation, reflection, orth orthogonal transformation within the lower dimensional space, a rotation within that, sp uh, sorry, scaling within that space, and then a rotation out of that space into the final dimensions of wherever we want to go. Uh, so the, hopefully that gives you some intuition of SVD. Um, we're actually, although the, the book talks a little bit about how to compute it in more detail, uh, we're not going to do that for, for what we need to do. You're going to use libraries to go ahead and compute it. Um, I realize by now some of you have been nodding off, like for a little here. Um, so uh, this take a quick intermission, go do something, get your blood flowing. Uh, maybe you should uh, do a couple of jumping jacks or something, take a walk, have some lunch. Uh, when we come back, we'll get into applications and leave material in the book behind.